Sparkin' Jack, I am Adrian, and today I have a box full of Omega Speedmasters. These are all limited edition, they are all so very different. And I've got to be honest, these guys have changed my opinions on Omega Speedmasters as, as a whole offering. Loads of you guys are going to ask what the case is all about. Um, it would certainly have been on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, go check me out at Bark and Jack. This case is by 1111. It's a Pelly case and it's by 1111. You can go give them a follow. But this video isn't sponsored by this case guy. This video is sponsored by Bark and Jack.shop. Over at Bark and Jack.shop, we have launched some little watch pouches. These are handmade in Florence by JPM, the leather master that is JPM. You get a little extra section here and the idea is that this is to prevent your bracelet from scratching the back of the case or just scratching itself. And you're gonna think, hey Adrian, isn't the back of that steel keeper gonna scratch my watch? No, it's not, because we've thought of that. There's an extra layer of leather in there to protect your watch from the back of the keeper. So there is nothing inside that is gonna damage your watch. But yeah, jump over to barkandjack.shop and check out our little watch pouches. So we've got four Speedmasters here. They're all limited edition. We've got, I've kind of put them in date order. So this is the CK2998. We've then got the 60th anniversary. This is the Speedmaster 57. We've then got the first version of the Speedy Tuesday. This is the tribute to the Alaskan Project 3. We've then got the second Speedy Tuesday, which is the Ultraman. So the first one that we're going to look at is the CK2998. This was launched in 2016 and it retailed for 4,000, around 4,500 pounds. They now go for around 5,000 to 7,000 pounds, depending on, on where you're looking and, and what you have with the watch. The case shape is based on the first Omega in Space case shape, which is actually, the first Omega in Space is my favorite Speedmaster. I, I think it's such a good looking watch. And it's kind of mainly down to the handset and the case itself. The case is 39 millimeters wide. We've got 50 meters water resistance. We've got stupid 19 millimeter lugs. I don't understand why they do 19 millimeter lugs. It's, it's just annoying. Really good thing about this is that it has sapphire crystal glass as opposed to the Hesselite that is on a lot of Speedmasters. And so this can actually take a bashing and it'll still look nice. The movement in all of these watches is the caliber 1861 and it's the Lamania 1873. It's a manual wind and it has 48 hours of power reserve. The big things that stand out to me on this guy are the bezel, the case, and the handset. The bezel is ceramic blue and it is loomed. And this thing, there's quite a lot of loom on this actually as, as a whole. And it looks absolutely killer with all of these little touches of light that just shine off it. I actually think this is a stunning watch. I absolutely love this piece. Next up, we have the Speedmaster 57. This is the 60th anniversary Speedmaster. And as the name suggests, it's based off the 1957 Speedmaster. This is probably the most characterful one out of the bunch here. It's got a slightly smaller case at 38 millimeters, a little bit more water resistance at 60 meters, but again, don't take any of these in, in the water. We have the same movements and got 19 millimeter wide lugs, which are just as annoying. But a cool thing about this is that we have some really, really nice touches of vintage character about it. I mentioned about the previous Speedmaster having sapphire crystal and that it's more hard wearing. This suits having the Hesselite. Hesselite distorts the, the dial slightly as the light goes through it. Lines start to bend a bit and the uh, kind of light starts to fade off in quite a nice way. And I really like the, the character that the Hestalite gives the dial. It is really nice. It does have Fotina and I know a lot of people hate Fotina, but this is a reissue. This is a nod to the vintage and also people like vintage inspired things. So it's it would make sense to give it that look. People buy vintage watches because of the patina that they have as opposed to the perfection that they used to be in. So you can't understand why they've done it. I really like the broad arrow hands on here. The, the hands and the, the logo actually are all highly polished and they stand out so well against that matte black gray dial, especially when the light just catches them. It looks amazing. This is a really cool piece. Really, really cool. Next up, we have the Speedy Tuesday, the first Speedy Tuesday, and this is a tribute to the Alaska Project 3. This was limited to 2012 pieces. <sighs> now, I've got to be honest, I don't like this one. <laughs> this is, I, I, I think this is foul, if, if I'm honest. Um, that's, that's not, let, let's talk about what I do like about it. 
no, there's not much I like about this watch. Um, the, the case is interesting because the case is brushed all over as opposed to having polished sections. Uh, uh, some of the flanks are polished, are highly polished on um, most of the Speedmasters. And it's quite interesting for that to be different on this one. It's quite interesting that the, the case is so satin, it's got such a dull finish to it that it looks like it could be titanium. But apart from that, there's, there, there's really not much I like about this. I, I don't like the reverse panda dial that it has, and it's probably just ruined by the fact that it has so many numerals around the sub-registers. Um, I'm sure there might be a reason behind that. Maybe someone who's using the chronograph needs to have really exact readout on... Um, actually, no, I can't think of an excuse for that. Uh, I, I just don't like it. I, I feel like the design of this watch doesn't flow at all. But it was a cool project for them to do the Speedy Tuesday. It was um, a collaboration with Fratello Watches, who started the whole hashtag Speedy Tuesday, and that's, that's how that came about. Um, but as a watch, uh, it's not my thing. Next up, we have the Speedy Tuesday, the Ultraman, the most recent one. This was launched last year in 2019. It's got a more traditional Speedmaster professional case with the twisted lugs that are highly polished on the... Kind of changes, doesn't it, on one of the twisted sides. But I think this looks really quite cool. There's a few colours on the dial, but I think they all work really very well together. We've got the orange, which is quite a dull orange. I, I like that. We've then got the really dull kind of faux Tina that's on the, the hour markers. And then we've got the white hands and the gray dial. I, I think color-wise, this is all a very interesting mix. And for me, it, it works really well. I really like this one. If you have an ultraviolet light, then you'll be able to see on the nine o'clock register, there is a little Ultraman logo in there. <laughs> it's really quite cool. It's a clever little touch. It's a cool touch because it just disappears. It completely disappears. There's, there's no lumen. It doesn't, it doesn't stay illuminated when you take the, the UV light off it. And so you have your normal watch, or relatively normal watch, that you can enjoy without visually the silly gimmick of the Ultraman logo in there. Some watches can overdo it with, with the gimmicks. Bremon. I think that's cool. That's really cool. If I was to rank these in watches that I liked and disliked, I'd have to do this. Put the Speedy Tuesday in last, the first Speedy Tuesday in last, the Ultraman in position three. Not that I dislike the watch, I just prefer these two watches. The CK2998 is an absolutely stunning piece. And I could imagine owning that. And the 57 is just, that's hot. These speedies have changed my mind so far as I didn't used to like Speedmasters because there were just so many variations of them. And I see variations as um, a kind of a sign of weakness in a company's design. For example, a natural thing to compare them to is to compare them to Rolex. If you look at Rolex's catalogue, there are very, very few variations. If you just look at how many variations there are of Speedmaster, it's insane. But now that I've got to spend a bit of time with these guys, I've had this for um, a, a good few weeks now and I've, I've spent a bit of time with them. It's interesting how different the watches are. Although they are all labeled Speedmasters, the, the feelings you get from them are just so different. This is epically vintage. This is really very modern. This is really quite formal. This was a mistake. <laughs> but you know what I mean? The, 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 the feelings that you get from these watches, although they are all part of the same family, they do give off such a different vibe. And I think that's what's interesting about the Speedmaster range is that they are all so very different. And that's, uh, I, I appreciate that now. Would I buy a Speedmaster now? No, it's, I, I don't have any need for a chronograph. I prefer the simplicity of time only watches. I'm just a simple guy and I enjoy the way those watches look. Visually, these Speedmasters are just too complicated for me. That being said, that, that 57 really is a stunning watch. This watch collection belongs to Flywatch over on Instagram. So give Flywatch a little follow just as a, a way of thanks for lending me this epic watch collection. 
Uh, and this is just an overview and just to kind of take you through what what, what these are. I think it's quite an interesting um, Speedmaster collection. Far more Speedmasters than what most people have. Uh, but if you want me to go deeper into one of them or, or you have questions about anything, I have this little box for the next month. So drop a comment down below and I'm very happy to spend more time with these watches. As long as you don't ask me to go into the Speedy Tuesday, that's, that's, um, that's not gonna happen. But any of the other three, I'm very happy to, to dive deeper into those. Guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this style of video, then hit that subscribe button down the bottom there and the little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you wanna support the channel, jump over to barkandjack.shop and check out the straps and watch accessories that we have over there. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack and follow the guy who lent me the watches at Flywatch. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.